Hey everyone, it's Ross. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about mulching things for the winter. You know, things that are cold sensitive, things that are maybe frost sensitive. We're gonna give that extra insulative layer to things. Now that it's December here, really almost in mid-December, mid uh, things are quite cold, man. Oh man, it's, uh, it's nasty out today. Um, I'm shivering just talking to you guys. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be covering these things now that I have some time to myself get a few things done you can see over here we have a whole section of potted fruit trees we did a video on this leaving them all outside for the winter time the whole winter they'll sit here you just got to protect the roots and what I use is straw you cover the pots with the straw and it does a couple things it insulates them but it also protects them from the sunlight uh, the sunlight hitting this black pot here is certainly gonna warm that up quicker in the spring so by adding this layer of straw, you're not only keeping them warmer, but you're also keeping them cooler longer in the spring. And we have a huge pile of mulch here, huge pile of straw. I've purchased a couple bales. I wanna say three to four large size bales, and I put them all over the property. Um, I find that it's a really nice material, uh, even just as good as wood chips, if you can get wood chips, but you know, here's a bale that we haven't fully used up. But you can see all over my new plantings here of the apples. We've also put in some persimmon here. We put in a whole new strawberry patch. All of this is just covered with straw. And this is a really nice material, like I said, to insulate the ground, increase the worms from coming in here. And uh, I even have it in my potato beds, as you can see. Uh, I think potatoes really love to grow in this material because it stays wet. It keeps the potatoes from greening. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful material. And I have created my own straw. I mean, you can do this. You don't have to go out and buy straw. But certainly you can create it and grow your own ornamental grasses or grow your own... I don't know what plant it is actually that creates straw. <laughs> But you can do it with ornamental grasses, and that's kind of what I've done here. We've, we've basically chopped up the ornamental grasses all the way down to the base because they kind of look pretty ugly as we go into the wintertime. You know, they have a nice look in the fall. Being an ornamental plant, they should look pretty nice going into the fall. But now that it's winter, um, you know, we chopped them all the way down to the base, and we have all this excess material here. We're going to take this material, we're going to cover the pots, we're actually going to be covering a bunch of plants too, and that's really what I want to get into here. Preferably, you should do this before rain. Uh, I think the straw should be wet because you could very easily put the straw down, as I've done over here. Uh, let me get out of the, the shadow there. You can see all that straw there. That's completely blown away from where it was, which was here. So uh, it would be really nice if it would be raining after I do this, but uh, it is what it is. Um, some other plants we're going to cover is the garlic I just showed you guys, because the garlic's a bit too big for this point in the season. Uh, we have lots of shallots that have come up here, newly planted shallots this fall. Uh, but we also have shallots that just never matured in time. My friend Brian gave me these in Louisiana. Thank you, Brian, if you're watching. I'm going to try my best to get these shallots here through the winter time. I've also been harvesting the tops off some of these. Uh, I've been making kimchi. We also have um, Egyptian walking onions and I probably can let these guys do their thing. I don't think I need to protect them, but certainly getting a nice shallot crop next spring out of these shallots here. I think protecting them will be key. Um, we're going to go around and we're going to protect my tea plants, and if I show you guys, I think I've showed you guys the tea plants, but we already got a little bit of mulch down here, not a whole lot. You can see these are my two Camellia sinensis. This is the plant that creates green, black, and white teas, and they're really not supposed to grow here. Um, <laughs> even in Japan, when we visited the tea farm um, in Wazuka, Japan, it just really wasn't uh, something they recommend. Growing tea really below uh, 
about negative, t negative 14 degrees Celsius is kind of a bad idea, which is about, if you go below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you're kind of getting into uh, iffy, ter iffy territory, but I like tea so much that we decided to do it anyway. So we're gonna see how this works out. And uh, you know, something else we've done to help kind of protect these things, we've got rocks, we've got them in a nice location, but adding in that straw is gonna be key. Now, if I go back to the backyard for you guys, um, you may wanna do this in your yard. I'm not going to because I live in a warmer place than probably some of you, but my strawberry bed, let me take you guys over to the strawberries. You may have to do this to your strawberries. Um, some varieties are just not as hardy. If you live in zone six, this may be something you should consider. If you live in zone seven, you're probably all right. But your strawberries here are now probably dormant, right? The, uh, the plants have kind of pushed themselves back down to the earth as much as they can. We're missing a lot of leaves. Uh, the leaves are starting to brown. This is a good time to cover them, but you don't want to do this too soon. You certainly don't want to do this too soon, but it is a good idea to be doing this to your strawberries, um, certainly. Now, what else can I show you guys? Now the figs, I, I don't think I'm going to protect them very well uh, with straw. And uh, the reason I don't think the straw would do a great job is because the straw <laughs> may actually kill them. And I've had this happen in previous years where I've put straw around the, uh, the fig trees. I've got a you know cage, I put a uh, chicken wire cage around the the whole outskirt of the tree, filled that that uh, chicken wire cage with leaves, straw, you know anything I could put in here. But I think that was a horrible idea because things like straw uh, create too much moisture. They hold too much moisture, and if that straw is rubbing against the bark here. The bark is, will start to rot. If enough of the bark rots, uh, the whole top of the tree will die. You know, that's why a lot of people recommend that when you're mulching your trees, don't put the mulch around the trunk of the tree. Now, I think wood chips, personally, are totally fine for most things, uh, especially if it's just over the winter time. I think leaves are perfectly fine, but straw, I don't think is. So if you're gonna protect your trees, um, I'm going to be doing that to this tree. I'm going to be insulating the soil here. We're going to keep it away from the, uh, the bark, but we are going to be insulating this whole section of the raised bed with straw. Why am I doing that to this particular tree? Well, one, I don't have any rocks. I don't know why I don't have any rocks. I must have just completely forgot about this tree. But we are going to protect this by keeping this whole raised bed area uh, protected because this tree is pretty much above the soil um, unlike these trees here my LSU purple Rondé Bardot Colonel Littmans uh, Little Ruby you know these things are planted in ground but they are much higher up uh, much more down I'm sorry so the, the root ball of those trees is only about four to six inches above grade. The entire root ball of this tree is above grade. So we've got a, ourselves a bit of a problem here. Um, and this tree just may not survive. But if I can put some straw down, protect this section of the, in the sides really of the raised bed, give it a little bit of insulation, you never know what'll happen. You never know. So I guess that's pretty much it, right? That's what we're is a simple process of just covering certain things with straw and I can show you guys here this is one of the ornamental grasses that we have and we've you can pretty much dig these guys up and divide them into many as many plants as you want and we did that all throughout the yard on both sides of our house here we planted some ornamental grasses as well as some crepe myrtles right next to that which are uh, having the trouble adjusting. But, you know, these ornamental grasses, man, they're very easy to duplicate, very easy to chop and drop. And there's a ton of material that you can be, that can be gained from these ornamental grasses. 
Um, let me just show you guys, I guess really quickly, how I'm going to be doing this. How I'm going to be strawling. Strawling, is that a word? How I'm going to be uh, putting down straw around these plants. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys have been learning something so far. I don't really know. There's probably a list somewhere of all the plants you would you could find that are frost sensitive, but those are the ones on my property that are more frost, frost sensitive to, than others. And you can see here, my garlic is taking off quite a bit and we're at mid-December. So this could certainly put the garlic back quite a bit and kind of shock the garlic. Whereas if the garlic was uh, instead at a much smaller size, something like this, this is a, uh, this is a shallot though, but you kind of get the idea, right? If the if the shallot or the garlic is only that tall, it's much more frost um, frost tolerant. So let me take some of this stuff here and show you guys exactly what is going to happen. Now you can, you're gonna put this stuff down, try to make sure it's already wet, right? So it's not gonna blow away. But you can, if you want, take the leaves and create little holes in the straw for these plants. And then that way, these plants are getting at least some sunlight um, and we're not covering the leaves with this material, but you know, it's not the end of the world if that happens, but I would just create some holes in the straw here. Kind of get things, you know, their own little space. So I want to thank you guys for watching this one. I know this one is um, probably a little bit more boring than some others, but it's a pretty important topic and something that is quite important that I'm doing in my yard. So I wanted to share it and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.